Malo lele, talo falava, bonjour, welcome to the Pacific Way. The community of Tukuraki in Fiji's highlands was destroyed in 2012 by devastating landslides. This is a story of resilience in the face of disaster and the devastating impacts of climate change. The community was one of 43 earmarked for relocation by the Fiji government due to their risk. In October 2017, after five long years, the community have a new village and for the first time in half a decade, they can finally fulfill their traditional practices again. In 2012, a massive landslide on the west coast of Fiji's Vitilevu Island came down the high mountain range of the Mba province. Boulders and tons of earth crashed down on the village of Tukuraki, destroying this home in the process and killing a family of four. <laughs> Shortly after the devastation, Tukuraki village was declared unsafe. The people of Tukuraki were asked to vacate the area, an area they have occupied for many generations. Na tuwe wa kisari ndona kandende, nda sengi mbula na nda koro, dali tuwa rabi, sana ndona kandende. Na taraba kali mbula na nda mbula na ngone, nda mbula ni buli, nda buli ni zaka zaka ni lotu. In 2016, a piece of land was identified for the community to build and relocate to. This was after many negotiations between the Fijian government, traditional landowners and the people of Tukuraki. The project would be funded by the European Union and implemented by the Pacific Community, SPC. After a year of development and five years of living apart, this displaced community now have a new Tukuraki to move into and rebuild their lives. After the vulnerability need assessment conducted by our climate change office, a total of more than uh, 600 communities were identified and registered to be relocated to higher grounds as they were at risk of being inundated by rising sea levels in the future. These are coastal communities. Today we are witnessing a relocation from within the highlands to a more safer and secured site. This relocation points out the fact that everyone will be affected by the impacts of climate change, irrespective of our locality. 
the relocation of Tuguraki would be a fine example of the adverse impacts of climate change on a community. It is also a fine example of being resilient. Tukuraki was destroyed five years ago by landslide and the people had to move. They were then affected again by a, a hurricane even and a few years later again now by the hurricane Winston. So they were hit by three disasters. And the government decided that this is really one of the most vulnerable villages and most vulnerable people in Fiji. So they decided to, to build this kind of village with SPC and the support of the European Union and make it also a model village to basically say, okay, this is a safe area for them. Here they can live now in safety. It is set up in a way which is climate resilience and, uh, and also in, in a way that they can develop themselves so that there is some economic activities, there's sanitation, there's water supply, there's a school. And we are very happy that we could support that. We provide a lot of the scientific and uh, evidence-based decisions that have happened around the relocation, uh, some of the assessment work, but more importantly we've provided I think the hands to enable both the infrastructure, the new infrastructure to take place. Uh, and the, the SPC team um, has done a fantastic job. Uh, it has been incredibly challenging for them, I'm sure. Um, but today I think we saw the results of a very unique um, partnership between SPC, of course the European Union, and more importantly, what I sense um, uh, very traditional um, processes around land ownership, land discussions, land conciliation, and how that has merged together with both scientific as well as development partner and, stake, um, and stakeholder support. Welcome back, you're watching The Pacific Way. Today we have in store for you a documentary which highlights the work of the European Union funded microprojects program which is implemented by the Pacific Community or SPC. Lighting Up Communities is a documentary which shares stories from people and communities in Fiji's sugarcane belt who discuss the impacts of the project in bringing solar power to the communities as well as MPP's work in upgrading school ablution blocks in rural schools and the introduction of safe water, sanitation and hygiene or wash practices to teachers and students. The Microprojects Programme, or MPP, a European Union funded project implemented by the Pacific Community or SPC was initiated to mitigate the adverse effect of the European Union's sugar price reforms that came into effect in 2017. On the 20th of February 2016, Category 5 Tropical Cyclone Winston struck the Fiji Islands causing extensive damage and killing 43 people. Total damage is estimated at 1 billion Fijian dollars, the equivalent of 460 million US dollars. In response to these impacts, the European Union and SPC facilitated a redesign of the MPP project to reorient activities to support the recovery needs of communities in the sugarcane belt which had been affected by T.C. Winston. There's two key result areas that we're focused on. One is to improve access to affordable electricity and income generating opportunities, and the other was to uh, improve access to uh, uh, improved uh, water and sanitation facilities, um, 
in particular in, in the school, uh, schools in the King Belt area. There's an additional component for the, that also comes under the WASH element, which is hydrogeological surveys uh, in six communities in the Cane Belt areas as well. Immediately after Tropical Cyclone Winston, the project was re-augmented and SBC worked closely with the Ministry of Education and NDMO to identify schools that would receive assistance. 34 schools were selected after having undergone a thorough assessment of the status of the ablution blocks, their water supply and other wash essentials. SPC then engaged the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Economy through a grant agreement to carry out the work as both ministries were at that point already working with schools in the rebuilding process. WASH is an abbreviation that stands for Water Sanitation and Hygiene. So uh, that's uh, to do with uh, water, uh, that is the improvement of the quality of water in schools, anything to do with water. That is one, and uh, the sanitation. Sanitation is the part where they uh, ensure that the facilities are covered, that is, uh, there are always the proper toilets are there, if there are flush toilets, the toilets are flushing well, and there's always water that will supply the toilets to keep them working all the time and there are no blockages. This school last year was the first year for them to introduce this wash. And uh, it's such a big change. It gets a big change to the school, especially with hand washing. And the uh, most uh, importantly was the use of a toilet. The use of the toilets for this school was, uh, was an issue. So we brought in toilet usage to come in line with WASH so that we can try to, to instill in children's mind the, the proper usage of a toilet. We are very fortunate that uh, WASH came in because most of the time in my past uh, years in teaching, even us teachers, eh, we don't bother about children's hygiene like washing their hands. Just after 12 o'clock we used to tell them, go and have your lunch without telling them to wash their hands. But uh, we are fortunate that uh, when the wash team came in, all those little things we used to neglect. Eh? But now, when we are aware of it and we inform the children, but children are enjoying doing it and they love doing it. The implementation of the program provided the opportunity for teachers who were going to be wash coordinators to be trained on how to implement the program in their schools. When I attended the workshop, I personally came to know that uh, that WASH program is very important in the school. Some of the changes that I brought in after attending the workshop, that uh, we have increased the number of washing points. There are more washing points and uh, more taps and hand basins being uh, erected in the school. And it has resulted that we have reduced the sickness level in our school. On routine visits to schools, the Ministry of Health was concerned with the high number of eye diseases such as conjunctivitis and trachoma. With the introduction of WASH, there was a dramatic reduction in these diseases. And with all these NCDs and the different types of diseases that, that are coming in, I think it is a very good idea to implement this WASH program in school. And we have seen that it is very effectively run. A lot of changes have happened. Uh, students are uh, adopting a cleaner lifestyle. They're having a more hygiene, better hygiene. One example I'd like to give you is when, when, the, uh, when we had the initial visit by, the, by a team to check the student's eye, uh, you know, then they find, found a lot of uh, trachoma cases in the students. And it was like alarming. We, when they initially, when the team came, we thought that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be so serious, but the, when we saw that the, the result, it was too alarming. But uh, after we implemented all the strategies that were told to us, like eye wash and face wash and hand wash, uh, when they came for the next visit, the number, the total number decreased as alarmingly as it had gone up.
The WASH program has generated a positive response from teachers, but especially from the children themselves, towards hygiene. One area in particular is menstrual hygiene. One good thing that uh, happened during the WASH program is that uh, they repaired the girls' toilet down and uh, they put showers, installed it, and it's for the girls who are going through their periods. They can shower, have their shower, and change their clothes. And beds are also provided in the office for them to use if they don't have it. In the holidays, a year two mother was sharing to me. She went like this, hey, head teacher, it's very good you people practicing those habits in the school. My little daughter, after coming back from the toilet, she'll go like this, mother, mother, soap, soap, for me to wash my hands. We have to wash our hands with soap and water after visiting the toilet. It all begins with the smaller children, and they are the ones who can change the entire community. And I believe in that, and I'm sure my students are going to do wonders in that area because we have also sent some questionnaires home to the parents in terms of wash and uh, we have uh, found that a uh, lot of valuable information had come the children are still practicing this wash program at home and so are the parents so thanks to all the organizations who have been uh, supporting us and uh, i must thank everyone for that An additional component of the WASH program is the hydrogeological surveys in six communities in the Cane Belt areas. These communities are usually affected by severe drought conditions, so the project is looking at assessing potential groundwater sources that can be developed in the future as water supply systems to provide the communities with some resilience for these types of severe weather conditions in the future we have been able to identify uh, good structures, geological structures or rock formations that would suggest good yielding formations there yeah, that might store a water supply, something that hasn't been done before and something that has really uh, encouraged the farmers, eh? knowing that there is groundwater sources nearby and uh, that would generate an attractive uh, commodity or an asset for cane farmers themselves. You know, uh, we've heard a lot that farmers are coming away from the from the from the from the farms because of uh, our challenging uh, conditions. Eh? Uh, we 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 are really thankful that the project was designed to look at this uh, very important uh, basic need, which is the access to drinking water that will somehow, we hope that it will uh, encourage the farmers to stay on and continue with their uh, farming livelihood now that reliable water supplies have been established. Eh? Bore drilling and pump tests in Gerilevu, a farming community in Ba, have revealed positive results with a good supply of water for the area. The response of the community with regards to the hydrogeological assessment uh, was very positive. Uh, they were very cooperative um, and uh, they're very grateful for the assistance that has been provided by the government and SPC. Eh? Soon after Tropical Cyclone Winston, around May and June of 2016, surveys were done in the sugarcane belt areas together with the Fiji Sugar Corporation, or FSC, to identify households whose homes were damaged and who did not have electricity. If you consider the livelihood of uh, cane farmers, um, they're not incredibly well off, as you can imagine. So, um, you know, we have to uh, allow them time to complete the refurbishment or rebuilding of the houses that have been damaged. So from February, we started in installation of uh, our target of 500 uh, solar systems uh, in that area. And um, as of today, uh, we're up to 416. So uh, it's, it's, it's been slow, but uh, you know, progress has been steady. Chawana Siliku and her husband, Ngelenika Kula, were among the beneficiaries. Living in a remote area, they could not express their gratitude enough at the installation of their solar system. <laughs> Ni mahirumpa na sola. 
itu nak kan itu marah buat kita mana? Sini tanpa, tapi tanpa tanah pagi ni tu jiki ke? Itu bangat tak cikun nanti nak tambut lagi? Boleh mana kerja sini? Seorang awak na, tahu siapa nak kerja sini kita santau, mesti butuh. Ia mana lah mana solat kita orang nak kita marah tak balik, nak kita mana? Mana orang nak bangat lagi nak dina? Tina karsini, tina tambutangi. Mereka tak bagi nasola. Dona kan itu maro. Itu maro tak sarangan sambora ramai cucungu. Lama ni balik tahu tumbuh nampung. Bawa bila bina kita ni ketukunya na bebu gilungu. Itu bawa solat lah. In Rakiraki, nestled beautifully into the hills in a place nicknamed Everest, is the house of Vijay Pratap. Vijay and his family were overjoyed that they could now have permanent electricity completely free. It's it just like we are in heaven. <laughs> I drink all night, Gorog, for that happiness. Just like we use kerosene light, benzene light, use karatra. Ta ab hai pehle kerosene chahi, benzene mango roho. Ab hai to button dabao, switch on. We are used in the kerosene light and everything, but my family, my kids are very happy, and they are thankful to this European Union and also the solar community. Is gaon ke taraf se mai bar bar dhanyawad de rahi hu European Union ko aur SPC. Sabhi ko mai bar bar dhanyawad de rahi hu. One of the original components of the MPP program that was linked to the rural electrification component was to look at the type of livelihood or income generating activities that farmers were engaged in. We engaged um, uh, with uh, Oxfam eventually, and uh, there were some assessments done on the training, reassessments done on the training needs. Um, and Oxfam, our partner, is working with a uh, friend, friend Fiji, and uh, they are currently delivering training on uh, uh, beekeeping, organic and cash crop farming food processing and there's also uh, youth employability skills so a lot of youth in the cane farming uh, areas um, who don't have access to employment they're getting trained on the use of Microsoft and various other uh, essential uh, office type skills. <laughs> The Micro Projects program has made a huge impact to the lives of families in Fiji's sugarcane belt areas. The assistance and support provided has had far-reaching effects right across the different levels of the communities from young children to adults. Children are learning proper hygiene, young men and women are learning new skills through the income generation training, and the electrification from solar power have had a dramatic effect and changed the lives of many families and made an enormous and positive difference to their lives. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Pacific Way. That's all we have time for, but be sure to check out all our videos on the Pacific Community YouTube channel or the Pacific Way Facebook page. Until the next time, to faso fua, mahalo, tata. See you same time next week.